When I grade your lab, I am going to run some testing code that's going to test your public methods. What I have here on the screen is the results of my test code. I've only, so I've obviously tested two string and I have two string printing the forward and backwards and also the size at the same time. So that saved me a lot of time. Uh, it's okay to leave your two string uh, printing out both the forwards and backwards and the size. Ignore the small index and big index. Uh, that was when I was testing my get node because sometimes small index meant I went from the front, big index meant that I went from the back or the tail. So what you see here is all of the add. So I just did the regular add where it adds to the end and I added four things, printed them out. Uh, and then I did ads using the index right here and I am highlighting all of that right there. There is, oh, there it is, good. So I tested indexes, the smallest valid index, which would always be zero, and I tested the largest index, let's see, which would be equal to size. So when size is five, I added butter to index five, and that should put it right at the end. So these index zero and index size, these are the boundary or the edge cases. They're the smallest and largest valid indexes. What you don't see in any of my code here is intentionally causing exceptions, catching them and printing the results. So I've already talked about that in other videos. I didn't want to clutter this up with extra test code. Uh, so I'm just showing you uh, the two different ads here. And again, I did a couple at middle indexes here because index five was the end, but then I increased the size by adding. So index five is now not the last index. Index five is this position here. Uh, then I, I don't know why I kept going with index five, but I just kept going. Anyway, so you see them added right here. Okay. How many do you need to add in here? Well, you need to test the zero index and the max index, and you need to test at least one middle index, meaning not the zero and not the size index. So next I tested remove, and again, you're gonna see the small index here. Uh, you don't need to print out small index. This is just me testing my get node to make sure it goes uh, from the tail when the index is big. All right, what did I remove? I removed a middle one, removed exit index two. So you see eggs right here. So I called remove at index two and I got eggs. And this is the result. You no longer see eggs in position two. Uh, oatmeal has been shifted up. And again, forward and backwards, you see oatmeal is right there. So size is eight. Then I removed at index seven, which is butter, and that was the last element, and you see that it's disappeared, and now jam is the last element. So that's the max valid index, and then I checked the minimum valid index, which will always be zero, <clears throat> and that was OJ. So I removed orange juice at index zero. So this is all testing remove with an index. I don't think I print out, oh, I guess it did print out big index. Oh, I know what's happening. I don't actually use get node when the index is at either head, let's see, at head or at tail. There's no reason to loop at head and tail, so I don't actually use the get node when the index is either of these two extreme values. I only use get index or get node when my index is in the middle. So that was my remove using an index. Next, I tested remove now with an element, so for us it's string. So now I tried to remove oats, and when you remove, before when you remove with an index, what's returned is the uh, element you removed, the string that you removed, and you can see that right here, uh, remove int index, and it says colon e, it's returning an e, which we instantiated with a string, so, this remove at an index is going to return a string. Remove with an element. 
it would be silly to return the element because obviously if you're calling remove with the element, you already know what the element is. So this remove here removes tr uh, returns true or false. It returns true if the element is inside the list. And you'll notice something I left out of my code. I'll talk about it after I talk about what's on the screen. All right, so I try to remove oats. Now I do need to look above to see where oats is. Oats is at position zero, index zero. So this is a boundary case. This is the smallest uh, index to remove. Uh, but again, I'm not calling remove index, I'm calling remove element. So I called remove with oats, and you can see that it removed oats, both forwards and backwards, printing out correctly, size is five, that's good. Next, I remove berries, which is right here, right in the middle. It doesn't have to be the direct middle, it can be any anything that's not the min or the max uh, element here. So I remove berries, which of course is true because berries is in there, and then you see berries disappear, you see oatmeal coffee, skip berries, tea jam. So there's that. Then I remove jam. And why did I remove jam? Because jam is at the end. It's the maximum uh, index node. So I wanted to remove jam, which is true. So jam is no longer here. If you watch the other previous videos, that's where I had my uh, no pointer exception that I explained. Uh, and I did fix it. So what's missing? Well, this remove right here returns a boolean so all these removes they all return true because I only tested remove with elements inside my list I now need to go and try to remove some strings that are not in my list so maybe I'll remove ice cream and I don't know, cookies sounds good and I should be getting false and of course the list should be unchanged the size should be unchanged and I will print that out uh, for your lab to get full points, you're also going to need to test uh, all of the, you need to intentionally cause exceptions for anything that uses an index, which again, I didn't put in here because I didn't want to clutter up the screen with too much stuff for this video. I'm sure this is already long enough. So I need to go back and add in uh, test code to check that the exceptions were thrown correctly when I give invalid indexes. The other thing you need to check, I didn't check any gets or sets. Uh, what else? Add, add. There's plenty of you who didn't do the at all. Um, I checked the iterator, let's see the iterator before. Uh, is empty needs to be checked. Uh, but the gets and the sets, for me, I didn't actually modify any of that code because unless you're adding or removing, none of those arrows, none of the previous and next arrows get modified. The only thing that gets modified or returned is the actual data of whatever node you're looking for. So in my code, the set and the get don't actually, uh, my code, I didn't modify it from my regular link list into my double link list. I just use those. Uh, now my get and set, of course they have indexes, so my get and set do use get node, uh, which I did modify because you need to go from the tail when your index is greater than half of size, and you would go from the head when index is less than half the size. So they do rely on get node, which I did modify.